Welcome to another interior real estate photography tutorial. Today I'm just going to be walking you through step by step uh, editing not a full listing. We won't go through every, every single photo, but I am going to go through quite a few and I'm just going to walk you through and talk you through a thing that I do when I sit down to start editing a listing photo is if you were just looking over my shoulder I know that this is something that I really it really helped me when I was learning so I'm gonna start making more videos uh, like this instead of just going over one video I'm just gonna basically be going at my own pace but talking you through what I'm doing and eventually if you watch more of these or watch them over and over again they'll eventually you'll start to pick up on everything that I'm doing so I am gonna move quicker than I normally do in other tutorials but you'll see that it will help you in the long run. So, this is what we're going to do. This is the uh, living room, and basically I'm, um, what i got to do is come over here to my EM1. Uh, where is it? i got to get my first interior first bump with that Leia lens. i got to really f tweak that white balance. Looks like it's a little bit blue coming in so I'm just gonna drop those blues a little bit down here and then let's see maybe bump that exposure up a little more maybe bring those shadows up so I'm just trying to get my ambient layer to look as nice as possible maybe bring those blues up just a little bit more it looks like it was starting to wash out some of the color in this back room but so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna copy and copy these settings and then hit one on the keyboard to flat or make a little one star so I know I'm gonna bring this one into Lightroom or Photoshop I mean so let's move to the next shot this is our flash shot let's paste our settings in that helped definitely overexpose but that's okay we're gonna get our color picker tool I like that we're hitting one on the keyboard moving to the next shot okay I just did another test or another flash pop that didn't need it just testing out and so then I came around the corner and lit up this back room so if we paste these settings in that looks good fix that white balance just in that room we're gonna be using light and mode to fix that and we flag that and that should be everything I did another flash pop to see about the brightness you always do multiple flash pops if you're not running with a uh, with a tablet or anything. I just fire away, you know, two, three different um, flash pop intensities, and then I pick the best one later on. It saves me time. Once we have them in Photoshop, I don't bother doing the auto align, but I will for this one. Make sure you select them all. Come up here to edit, auto align layers, and then hit OK. I will do this. I'll go back and do this if my images don't look like they're aligned, but nine times out of ten they are. And so I don't think I did it at all for this listing because I don't really touch my tripod. I do um, touch the camera if, you know, to adjust the exposure or the um, shutter speed. That's it. Okay. So this is the ambient layer. I do not need that on right now. I'm going to shut that off. And I got my uh, room in the back there. So we're going to put that up just underneath the ambient layer we're going to turn that to lighten mode there so I toggle that on and off and I do see some light spilling so I'm just going to create a layer mask leave it on white and right bracket to make that bigger we're just going to paint that out and I believe my flow is only at 5% but that's okay and we'll kind of feather that in around the door a little bit so we toggle that on and off that looks pretty good we do have some issues though with that glare in that window, so we gotta try to brush that out. And that looks super good to me. Let's turn our ambient layer back on. A lot of times I like to just do my opacity at about 50%. Let's see. Sometimes I like to check luminosity mode. Let's see if that did anything. And actually it did. I like that. I like the way that looks. And again, I'm just playing with the opacity now to see. That would be zero uh, ambient light, and then 50%, 70. We'll leave it. At, we'll leave it at 50. That looks good. I'm just gonna right click, flatten image, Command S to save it, back into Lightroom, that TIFF file, and then my final bump on that one. Adjust my exposure so it's not too bright. Check my blacks. I preset. I really hammered those blacks. 
sometimes I don't like it because it tends to darken it up too much. And the other thing that I like to do is maybe crank that sharpening up to 75-80% and then hit the top left button on my keyboard to flag it and now we're moving on to the next scene. So let's check out this one. Okay, this is the ambient layer, pasting my settings in, adjusting that exposure. We want to try to brighten that up as much as possible. Going to check our white balance off the ceiling. I like the way that looks. We'll hit one, flag it. And I believe this is just another ambient shot because I can tell because my lights aren't blown out. So this is just above the camera pop. We're going to use this one. Make sure that exposure goes. Looks like it's a little too blue. Let's see if we can get some warmth back into it, and that did help. Let's go light that dining room now. And again, I'm using that 8600. No clue what my flash power was. It was super low, like 132nd, 116th. And let's see. I think we're good. Maybe we'll check white balance in that room. There we go. Set one. And get these into Photoshop. Okay, that ambient layer sitting on top. We don't need it on right now. And we got our dining room shot underneath. We're going to move that up underneath the ambient shot and turn that to, whoops, where is it? Lighten mode. Right there. Toggle that on and off. Looks good. It's even lightening it up in the mirror, too. That looks awesome. Okay, so now we just need to worry about our ambient layer. Let's try 50%. That tends to work really good. Let's change that to luminosity mode. That helped even more with that color casting. And I believe we're done. Let's uh, flatten this image. See, once you get a rhythm down, it goes pretty quick. Let me just do our interior final bump. And that exposure was pretty good to me. Maybe not so much on the blacks. And then we'll flag that one. Let's move on. What do we got here? That one's a simple one. I want to get to some more complicated ones here. Here's a good example of I just reached in and did a flash pop. I believe if I reset this one, not much change. We'll paste the settings in. Bring this down. Looks like we could use true color right there. And, and again, I'm just playing with those sliders. And the only thing that I might do is bump that sharpening up a little more. And the verticals are already set in the preset, so we're done. We can flag that one and call that a day. Let's see what this one was. This is the dining room. What else have we got? Yeah, this one was... Let's reset it. Paste our settings in. I wonder why it's turning blue. Oh, because it's custom. We'll do as shot. Bring that exposure up. Now we can copy these. But I'm always going to hit it if I can. White balance check on the ceiling. We already got it as a mark two. What's this one? Oh, wait. We need our ambient shot. Where's our ambient shot for this one? Would it be this one? Let's paste our settings in and see what that does. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be the ambient shot right here. Actually, it looks pretty good for an ambient shot. You know what I do, though, typically, is I do put my flash on a super low power and just hold it, like, at head level right behind the camera and just to fill that in a little bit. Because light is splattering in if you do that. I don't hold it right up against the ceiling because then it's, it's a little bit too much. But let's go to the next one. Yeah, and I didn't like that. It was too bright. Let's paste these settings in. This was the flash pop above the camera. Marked it as two. Let's see, what's this one? And paste our settings in. Yep, bring that exposure up. All I care about is this seating area over here. And bring, yeah, that looks good. So now we can just command and click on our two stars. And the reason why I do one and two stars is so I don't get confused on going in the previous image that I used one star with. I know that. The new image is two, so I alternate between one and two stars, if you're confused about that. Just like as before, ambient layer gets turned off. That far room comes up underneath the ambient, and we turn it to lighten mode. And I just like to toggle on and off, make sure that, yep, see, right here, you can see myself. So I just use uh, just a single mask and brush that layer from underneath back in and now we can see that 
basically all we did is turn the light on. But I'm still going to feather in this so it looks a little cleaner and more natural with that carpet. There we go. And now we can turn our ambient layer back on and try that 50% rule. Go to the luminosity, see if that works. And it does. It gets rid of that color cast. That looks really nice. I like that. Let's uh, flatten this image and get it back into Lightroom. Let's do our interior final bump. Bring that exposure back down. Looks like we got the blacks too much. And again, I should probably f tweak this preset so I'm not doing this every time. But, you know, you keep going back and forth. Every preset is going to be different for every listing. Let's see what this one was. Okay, this was a tough one. Just because we had this beam. This was, let me reset this. Yeah, see how dark that was? I mean, we have, it wasn't too complicated, but let's just paste our settings and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, and what I do sometimes is I will try to bring my yellows down. Not too much, but trying to get rid of some of this yellow back in here. We got that one. And let's see, now I'm just worrying about that window view, so I'm going to paste my settings in here. Bring this exposure up so it's easier to blend it. I like the way that looks. And we're just going to use those too. Okay, for this one, I really want to focus on just blending, So, because if I do a 50%, we start to get the shadow in here in the door frame and it just starts to look muddy. So I'm just going to manually blend in for this window right here at 5% flow on my brush and then get some rid of some of this glare on this countertop too. And maybe in here a little bit. I mean, I don't need a whole lot of flash anywhere. Get rid of some of this. Right up here. And that is it. See? I mean, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to. You don't have to spend forever doing this. Command S. Back into. Let's see what our interior final bump does. And if you still want to pull some of that yellow out, it's uh, more orange. But then it starts to pull a little color out of the floor, so I don't care to do that. I don't think that'd be done. I like that. Let's go on to... Bedrooms are easy, especially with this method. My ambient layer was almost good enough, so let's reset this. So when I do paste my setting in... Let's see. Yeah, that gets me pretty close, actually. Do a white balance check. And then all I'm doing is really doing a flash pop for that window so the window's not super blown out. And that's it. We're just going to bring these quickly into Photoshop. And I'm just exposing for that room for my ambient layer. Nine times out of ten, your ambient layer is going to give you all the color you need. So a quick way, you could just take that ambient layer and drop it to 50%. Or quickly do a layer mask and then just lightly brush back in that window. If all the other ambient looks good, then I just typically do that. But I'll show you why. I've kind of gotten away from doing the 50% uh, ambient rule. I'll show you why. Because in the flash shot, see the shadow underneath the fan? Or the light? It's just, it's not natural. It would not be there. Because the ambient layer looks like that. I mean, you are adding more light in. But I don't mind that. And actually, you could turn this to luminosity mode. And then brush in for that window. Just so it's not completely blown out. Just like that. And call it a day. Because we bring it back into Lightroom. And once we do our interior final bump, it'll give it some life. You can maybe pull those shadows up if you need to. Watch those blacks. And there you go. Now, this is another issue with that luminosity mode, that shadow issue. So if we technically, say we didn't do luminosity mode, let's undo this by hit Command Z. We just leave it the same, just change it to normal mode. 
flatten it, save it again, and then do our interior final bump, bring those shadows up, fix those blacks. I mean, still have a muddy shadow mess over here, but again, you it's not important. Unless this was an architectural, that's going to be really good for real estate. You just got to know the price point. All right, let's go on to kind of a tough colored bathroom. This was tough because I don't know as if I did an ambient shot. I'm trying to find it. It might have been this one. I took multiple different colors. So actually, we could do this in two steps. Let's paste this one. And you know what? We will do this one for the window. Paste the settings in. Bring that down. And I noticed it was really dark behind here. So what I did was came over here, did a flash pop, and there was a toilet sitting behind here. So we're just going to brighten this up. And then bring these two stars in. I've already added to this listing, so that's why they were already two stars. Okay, so whether or not this was the ambient layer or not, I doubt it. It was just another flash pop, but we'll pretend it. Oh no, this was this could be the ambient layer. So let's get that to the top. Might have been an afterthought. Maybe I thought, eh, I probably should do an ambient layer to save myself. So we'll shut that off. We'll bring that other flash pop to the top, just like we're doing uh, any other room. And then see how that lightens it up. Maybe feather that out a little bit. And then we can do our opacity at 50% for this one. And that gives us enough light. And into your final bump right there. Bring up those shadows, maybe the blacks. Should have put more flash power to it. Will it work? It'll work. And we just got to crop this down a little bit. Too much door. Something like that. There we go. That looks a little better. Verticals could be corrected. And I will do that manually if you know, these have lines on them. So I'm just following this tile line right here. Like that. You can either do that or the door, which depending on how you were positioned in the room. Or you do guided and run both and see how that looks. And it kind of pulls things into correction right there. All right. I'll take it. Flag that one. I believe that's all I need to show you. I'll just kind of show you the different images and what the blended version looked like. That was the flash, ambient, and then blended in. Let's see what this one was. Yep, ambient, flash, blended. The only thing about this image, and I'm surprised it didn't show up on the others, is this haziness right in here. And that is due to my neutral density filter being all scuffed up. So I just had to order another one today. Didn't realize it was causing that much of an issue. But make sure you keep covers on your filters. Do not let them get scratched. They will affect your the quality of your photos for sure. Here's one. Let's see. This was in the basement. This was a really dark dark room if I reset this this was the ambient layer paste our settings in and actually if you do white balance check there we go Look at that difference auto white balance was not having it for this one and I ended up doing side to side flash pops here and then this was the final image right there so there you go, guys. I'm going to be releasing more of these tutorials where I walk you through each listing at a, more, uh, at a faster pace. You know what? If I'm going too fast, just slow it down. Just watch it over again. You know, it's not like I can't use the watch time. But anyway, I'm just kidding. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more tutorials and learn how to shoot into your real estate. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.